Welcome to part three of Beyond Two Souls. Now we're going on to the first interview. This is one of the much, much earlier chapters in the game. In fact, I believe off the top of my head that it is the second chapter chronologically. In this chapter, we'll see Jody being introduced to Nathan for the very first time. This here is Susan, who at the time is Jodie's foster mother, and we won't see much into Jodie's relation with the foster parents until some of the later chapters, in terms of the playthrough order, but I quite like her character, in a way. For now, the main focus is on Nathan, so let's watch what's going on here. My name is Nathan. All of them are different kind of clippings on the wall. They're from different newspapers and some of them are repeated just to save making new textures. But I think that you kind of expect that sort of thing, really. Because it's the kind of texture they don't expect you to look at. Jody, my job is to study strange events and then try to explain them. Like the things that happen around you, right, Jody? I like the way that Nathan is inherently understanding. The way he's introducing himself and addressing Jody's problems here is very non judgmental, which is the best way for a researcher type person to approach this situation. And just makes me like his character that little bit more. Is he a ghost? Or a spirit of someone who passed away? You do kind of have to sympathise with Jodie at this point in time. Especially like with how young she is at this point, And the way that she's just so respectfully responding to Nathan's questions about Aiden. I'm starting to wish now I had a look at the option of Can you draw him for me as a yes? Because I'd be curious what she comes up with. That's it, I want to demonstrate the power, so I'll go for the most expensive thing to destroy first. One of the things you can do when you're tinkering around in the office is you can approach and move around the snow globe that Nathan has on his desk. And it says for daddy on it, like uh, his child would have bought it for him. But he offers it towards Jodie if she wants it. And that does signify that he might have some problems in terms of his family or that his work life has overtaken it, which they do explore quite a bit later on. And I think that's a neat little touch. And I kind of wish I'd shown that off here as well, to be honest, but didn't think of it at the time. Now on to a chapter that's set quite a bit later, because we are now in the CIA, or at least we're training for the CIA at Camp Perry. This entire chapter takes about nine or ten minutes, but it covers about two to three years of Jodie's life. She's 18 when she starts this chapter. She's 18 here, but by the end of it, she's 20 years old. But this entire chapter is basically a montage and it feels like a really sloppy way of showing this because as I've mentioned in the last part, we don't really know why we're here, or at least at the moment we don't know why we're here at all. So we've got this montage of stuff happening and it's not explained. But the bigger thing going on here are these bloody action prompts. Because we're in heavy rain, when you got an action prompt it would have a QTE on the screen, like maybe press up or press these buttons. In this game it just sort of blurs the screen and implies a direction. Which works sometimes, but other times 
you have no idea which way you're actually meant to push because they all function on the analog stick, the right analog stick. The direction's only implied and it's especially with how quick they come up, you can't necessarily tell which way you're meant to go or you might think you're meant to defend yourself when in actuality you're meant to be throwing a kick or something like that. Like this you can clearly see you're supposed to press right and actually it's giving the full prompt here so you can see what you're meant to do there but in some of the late ones and in some of the ones in other chapters I could really do without these or if to make the interaction there if it were to have an explicit push right QTE come up New Ready to Rumble game ain't looking too great, not gonna lie. Take cover. And it's this section. We've got a stealth shooter. I don't like this particular section because the prompts to run to hide behind a wall they're not always clear so you have moments like this where I've pushed the button it locked onto the wrong thing and I sort of wandered around on my knees for a little while it's like there what do I necessarily do do I run there or do I just shoot straight for the guy This is a very typical tough guy encouragement going on. This is so unnecessarily fiddly, the controls in this section. <laughs> I'm just sort of running around wherever and nothing's actually happening, so I take it I'm not dead. Press R1 to school. <laughs> this is so silly. Excellent, Jody. Okay, recruit. Now get rid of those oil drums. That took a little while for the texture to pop in, probably there. I'm not sure whether that's something glitching out. In the first chapter it was left us with the impression that Jody can't control what Aiden does, but Aiden seems to be really cooperating with her, like with that section just saying of knocking the oil drums down. So that could be kind of symbolic for the relationship between Jody and Aiden growing over the years of them getting a closer bond. Or it could be that David Cage is just very inconsistent with this thing. Especially smile with a nosebleed, yeah. This is so repetitive now. I really don't think the montage approach to this was the right one. Uh, if you wanted to have a chapter where she's being introduced to the CIA, just like, yeah, show a little bit of this, but you don't need to drag it out like they are here. It's just wasting my time, really. I've got, 
I've got the impression of what's going on, so now you're just making me do these prompts for no reason. Now we're back here again. Gotta be pretty flexible to do that. This is an interesting little mechanic, the fact that Aiden can heal Jody's wounds. And you use this a couple of times later on. Now, while this most definitely isn't the longest chapter by miles, there are some really long chapters in this game that go on for like an hour, this is the one where it feels it's definitely outstayed its welcome. Because I'm bored now. <laughs> I'm bored now. Let something else happen. We can show all these different clips of Jody training, but I don't, I've stopped caring. I just want to see the next thing. Some of this stuff going on does look painful. Not bad. The music's not particularly interesting here either, it's just that sort of drum beat sound over and over. This is the section where I managed to cock up a bit too because again the controls really fiddly and this time there are actual consequences for the people spotting you. So you've got to just make sure you get the pattern down right here and do what I'm going to do in this take. Now come on, he saw me before I grabbed hold of him. I'm pretty sure if he was a real guy, he could have shot me then. Use the same barrel tactic twice? Yep, yeah, don't mind how I do. That's how close I can get to him without him realising, by the way. I'm pretty sure they're bluffing here. Use the barrel tactic a third time? Sure, why not? I mean, it's not like we'll see later on that Aiden has the ability to possess and flat out kill these people in with no effort. Though granted, these are obviously training guys, so we're not going to do that. But we know the options available. So if this were an, a real group of people trying to attack us rather than training people, we could potentially cut out all this shit and just kill them. He must have saw me there. Okay, now we're going to use the possession thing just to, I believe, knock him unconscious. Oh yeah, we could have done that with all of them, really. But I guess it's just an exercise to... Think of all the different approaches we could potentially take should we be put in this environment. And it's reliant on Aiden's cooperation as well, so having him knowing what to do is always a useful thing too. Not bad, Jody. If this wasn't an exercise, you'd be dead by now. If this wasn't an exercise, you wouldn't even be able to open your big mouth right. It's the best way to talk to people who have a gun to your head. 
Congratulations, Operative Holmes. You made it. Welcome to the agency. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Jody. Welcome to the agency. Phoenix, like you Great made job, it. Jody. Congratulations. I'll see you next time for part four.